Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today, we're going to be talking about my oldest AR. This is my Palmetto State Armory AR-10. At least it used to be mostly Palmetto State Armory, but it has uh, gone through a few changes since then. So we're gonna go ahead and go through some of those things. Um, so of course the gun is empty before we start going. But this is a budget oriented or value oriented like most of my builds are. So we're going to go through all the little individual pieces that go into this, some of my thoughts about them, some of the things I like, dislike, and things that I would change. So we're gonna go ahead and start out with the front of this gun. So we're gonna talk about probably one of the best additions or best changes that you can do to your to your palmetto state armory ar-10 is to swap out the barrel now the barrel that came with this guy originally when i first bought it because this was the first ar platform gun that i bought i bought this guy a little bit over a year ago and i put a couple thousand rounds through it through a couple different barrels but this guy uh, the barrel that's on it now is a 16 inch socom profile barrel and it replaced the 18 inch thin slash medium profile barrel that was on it before from Palmetto State Armory. The one that was on it from the factory was an 18 inch, one in 10 twist, mid-length gas system. Um, it was stainless steel, so it wasn't 4140 like this guy is. So it was supposed to be a little bit more accurate or 10 towards a little bit more accurate. But this uh, Bear Creek Arsenal barrel that's on the right now, and I've had excellent luck with Bear Creek Arsenal barrels with their standard calibers. I know that their 6.5 Grendels had some issues in the past, but they seem to have fixed those. But for 308 in AR-10s, I've had excellent luck with their barrels. This one here, as I mentioned, is a 16 inch, one in 10 twist. Um, it just has a parkerized finish on it. And the best part about it is when I got it, they were on sale for $60 with free shipping. So I got this barrel delivered to me, $60 with free shipping. Now it's a SOCOM profile, so it's not a heavy profile. It is heavier than the profile that was on the 18 inch barrel. So even this, though this guy is a couple inches shorter, um, and so it's a little bit more compact of a package, it actually weighs about the same. So you're not really saving a whole lot of weight there. All you're really doing is getting a more compact, rigid barrel. And in this case, actually much more accurate. With the Palmetto State Armory barrel that came with it, which is like a $200 barrel, which is still cheap, but it's not as cheap as this guy. Um, I was getting anywhere from an inch to an inch and a half with various different ammo types um, and the really high quality stuff like uh, Federal Premium Sierra Magic King 168 grain type stuff. I was getting about an inch and a half in some cases, which isn't really great for the average. You want to see that down around an inch. But with this BCA barrel on here right now, I'm actually averaging under one MOA with really high quality ammunition, both Magtech uh, 168 Sierra Match King and Federal Premium. Uh, 168 grain Sierra Match King. I really have good luck with Sierra Match King bullets. Uh, so that's what I like to put through them, both 168 grains, because it has a little bit more aggressive of a twist rate with one in 12 to launch heavier bullets. Uh, but this barrel is sub MO8. I do have a whole video dedicated to the accuracy of this guy. I think it's like 20 minutes long on my channel. So if you're interested in exactly how accurate it is with a bunch of different loads, you can go ahead and check that out. But uh, it's kind of the heart and the soul of the gun and it kind of fits into the rest of the purpose for this build and so and for $60 for what I got it for is absolutely excellent. I think currently they're running anywhere from $80 to $100, which is still a really good buy. Uh, but I really like their uh, this barrel specifically and the other barrels that I've tested. All of my uh, BCA barrels that I have, which I have like six or seven now, very, very accurate stuff. And here on the end of the barrel, we have a Radical Firearms. This is their Ghost Flash Hider, which I have on this guy and also on my 12 and a half inch AR-10. And they both do a really good job of being small, light, compact, and doing a really good job of removing that flash, especially off the 12 and a half inch. There's very, very little flash, which is very nice for a very inexpensive uh, muzzle device. These are about eight to 10 bucks, depending on where you buy them from. Um, but they work really well and they're really small, compact, and they, they, do, they don't need any timing because they're perfectly symmetrical. So you can just tighten them down to your heart's content and they're good to go. Um, the rail that we're running on here, this is a key mod rail from AIM Sports. Um, I got it on sale for about $50, though most of the time they're like 75 to $100. This is a 13 and a half inch rail. I wanted something a little bit shorter 
to keep the weight closer towards me and not so far out. Um, it's key mod, which is fine. I know MLock is technically better than key mod, but for what I use it for, not a big deal. Um, one funny thing about this rail, I bought it on sale for $50 and it didn't come with the mounting hardware. So I have my own uh, makeshift mounting hardware on here. Uh, it has two uh, tightening screws on the bottom and then one anti-rotational one on the top. So it's pretty rock solid. I uh, haven't had any issues with it. It does have a lot of material cut away from it. So it's actually fairly lightweight, even though it is a little bit more bulky of a rail than like an AR-15 rail or something like that. Uh, underneath the rail, we have a expensive Odin Works adjustable gas block. It's a very nice adjustable gas block. It does a really good job of giving you uh, fine tuning abilities with your gas system. Um, however, for the cost, it's about three times more expensive, or actually four or five times more expensive than my Cotton Arms adjustable gas blocks uh, that I run on my other guns. And for the money, I don't really think it's that much better. So I spent a lot of money on it. It was the first one I bought, and it does a really good job as what it's supposed to do once you figure out how to get it set. Uh, it's pretty much good to go, and you don't need to worry about it. But again, it's just, four or five times more expensive than cotton arms and I haven't had any issues with cotton arms. Um, the last thing to mention out here on the rail is we have a BCM CAG grip. This is of course in key mod. Um, you don't need one, but I really like it as a reference point for my hand or if you're shooting off of a barricade or a tree or a truck or something like that, it gives you a point of reference and something you can rest the gun on and kind of push against, especially if you kind of dig it into something to give you a little bit more stability. So it is something that you can totally remove, especially for a longer, more or battle rifle uh, type setup where you're going to be taking longer shots, taking more time, less running and gunning and trying to just keep that recoil down or whatever else you have your grip on there to do, looking cool or whatnot. Uh, moving back from there, let's go ahead and talk about the optic setup on here. It's a fairly uh, interesting setup and it is a little bit convoluted and actually going to be one of the things that I don't necessarily like about the setup overall. So the main optic on here, this is a UTG AccuSync. Um, it is a three to 12, which in my opinion is a really, really good um, range for a scope, especially on a little bit longer range setup like this guy is. Um, it's perfectly capable out to probably in a really good shooter's hand, a thousand yards, but for me more like 600 yards. And the gun is plenty accurate to do that. Of course, you're still getting um, really good ballistics out of a 308, out to 600, 700, 800 yards, and I'm sure Good shooters can push them much farther, just not me. Um, now, the interesting thing that I have on here is I also have a 45 degree offset red dot. This is a OTW or outside the wire uh, red dot sight. They're very cheap and inexpensive, but they're very highly reviewed. Um, they're pretty much indestructible. Uh, you can run over them, you can shoot them, and they pretty much won't die on you. Um, they're very cheap. You can find them on Amazon, eBay for like $30 most of the time. And I have it on a pretty simple 45 degree offset mount. And it sits right underneath the scope and without much clearance. So it's a pretty tight package overall, which I like. And it allows you to be able to take your shots through your scope and a simple rotation and you have a pretty good visual through the red dot. So um, I like that a lot and it does give you a huge amount of capabilities with a setup like this. The downside to it of course is that it's one very long, big, bulky, and of course heavy on top of that. And you also have to manage your three to 12 and your red dot. And so there's a, there's a lot of things going on here. So for instance, the zero on my red dot is 36 yards because that kind of gives me a very general, pretty much aim for the chest and you'll hit them out to about 300 yards. And you know, you have a very tight window of where that bullet's going to actually hit in. Um, for the top, uh, for my main optic, the UTG AccuSync, I have it uh, zeroed at 100 yards. So the drops are fairly consistent with the mil dot system that this guy has. Now, talking about the UTG scope, if you don't know, uh, these scopes are generally found for like $120 to $150. Um, I picked this one here up for $90 used, but UTG has a transferable lifetime warranty. So I really didn't care about picking it up used, and it came in really good shape and it has uh, adjustable turrets on top that are in quarter MOA, so plenty of adjustment for me. Uh, not the most precise thing in the world, but it's not really geared to an ultimate precision setup. Uh, and adjustments are nice and crisp and very accurate. They seem to track very well. I pretty much uh, zeroed it in about five rounds and then I've set it and forget about it and it even seems to hold really well. Uh, the glass on it, is nice, it's very clear, it's very on par with almost any budget or value optic, if not a little bit better. Um, the only thing that I kind of dislike about it is it does have a 30 millimeter tube 
It's very long. It's like 14 inches long on here. It's a very long, big package, but it has a really small field of view. So even though you are even on 3X or something like that, you're not seeing very much compared to even some higher, um, higher magnification. So for instance, 3X on this feels like four or six X on some of my low power variable zoom opt optics. So you don't really see a whole lot, which kind of necessitates having an offset red dot because when you're at three X on here, you don't really have a lot that you're looking at. And so it's kind of limiting and especially for how big the scope is, which is of course, just one of those kind of drawbacks of having a more budget oriented setup. Uh, for me, a more apt setup or a better setup for this guy would be like a one to eight with just backup iron sights and no offset red dot. Um, though of course you can always run that but for me it does add a lot of weight even though it does give you a really uh, essentially the the best sort of up close and personal sort of capabilities but a one to eight on here would still give you plenty of range easily out to 500 600 yards no problem with a lot of precision um, but what it's not going to do is add a ton of weight and be super long most of the time and one nice thing about one to eights now is that there's a lot of really good options on the value slash budget uh, market for under four hundred dollars for a one to eight which is really nice so it gives you really good up close options and really good precision long range options without having to have a very long bulky and a little bit awkward setup like this is so now let's go ahead and talk about the last couple things on here that are truly 100% Palmetto State Armory so we have a Gen 2 uh, AR-10 lower from Palmetto State Armory I really like their Gen 2 lowers they seem to do a really good job they do have a Gen 3 lower out now which I have not tested or tried and I don't really think I'm gonna pick one up because it doesn't seem to have a whole lot of advantages over their Gen 2s but the Gen 2 AR-10 AR-10 lower, it's of course a DPMS style lower, um, is a really nice forged lower. The fit and fitment on it's really nice. All of the uh, parts on it are super smooth, um, I, so I don't really have any issues there. The thing that I really didn't like uh, about this lower from the factory was that it had a really heavy and aggressively gritty trigger, so it did not have a good trigger feel whatsoever. Uh, now, however, I have a uh, one of their enhanced polish triggers in there with the reduced power spring. So I try and only run brass through it right now because sometimes you're going to have issues penetrating those hard primers from steel, like uh, Burdan primers, I believe is what they are, from Wolf or Tula or something like that. So this guy's currently set up for more brass loadings that use a little bit higher quality primers that you don't necessarily have to worry about getting a light primer strike. Uh, moving back on the lower, we have their standard Gen 2 buffer tube, which is slightly longer than a standard buffer tube just to allow that bolt to go back and forward uh, without hitting the back of the receiver, of course. And so, one thing that's nice about that is that the farthest forward position, which is about you know uh, an inch or so farther forward than it would normally be, is actually perfect for me. And so I actually can just leave it kind of sitting there because of course I'm not very tall, so my arms aren't very long, so I don't need a lot of uh, room back here. Now, one another thing about this guy that I don't necessarily like is actually the stock that I have at the back. This is a Trinity Force Alpha stock, uh, which has a really nice cheek weld. It has a really nice pad on the back, so it's very comfortable to shoot from, especially from the prone position. The issue that I have with it is it's almost a pound. It's a really heavy duty polymer um, stock, and it's just really heavy. So I don't really like it all that much. Uh, not because it's bad, it's just really heavy. And so you can save about eight ounces, six to eight ounces, just using one of the Magpul carbine stocks, and you're gonna save yourself a bunch of weight and not really lose any capability. Now, internally on the lower, as I mentioned, I changed out the trigger and the trigger springs, and so it's a much better, much crisper pull. Um, it's probably about four and a half, five pounds. It still feels like a mil spec trigger, so it's still a little bit mushy. It's not super crisp. It doesn't have a super defined wall, but it still does a much better job than the stock like nine or 10 pound trigger did that was really gritty. So it's a definite improvement there. Um, now on the inside of the buffer system, we have a H3 buffer. Uh, Palmetto State ships them with an H1 buffer, which is a little bit anemic for what it requires for a 308. So I have an H3 buffer in there right now and a JP Enterprises tuned and polished recoil spring. Now uh, JP Enterprises makes a lot of really good components and so I really like a lot of their stuff. The recoil spring by itself is like 30 bucks, which is a little bit of money for a recoil spring, but it does a really good job of slowing down the bolt and doing what it needs to do to ensure proper cycling. Don't have any issues with it, really like the system a lot. 
it paired with the heavier buffer paired with the adjustable gas block means that without a muzzle brake this thing still shoots like a pansy it's very very light very controllable and it's one of my most fun guns to shoot especially for being a 308 so moving on from there that's pretty much the lower uh the other thing that i have on here that i changed out was it shipped with an a2 grip but i have a magpul moe plus so it's the over molded grip which i really like something to note about the gen 2 lower is that the ducktail on the magpul grip doesn't quite fit snug up against the gen 2 lower not a big deal it just looks a little funky that's all um, moving on from there though let's go ahead and talk about the upper so the upper is a Forge 7075 aluminum, of course. Now, when it comes to Forge versus Billet on an AR-10, I will go Forged every day of the week because it is, generally speaking, much lighter and you don't really need the billet on it. It might look cool in a few cases, but for most cheap uppers for an AR-10 or M5, whatever you want to call it, um, Forge is going to be the way to go just because you're going to be saving a lot of weight. And on an AR-10, it's naturally more heavy. There's more material there, so I like to reduce that weight. And the weight on this guy is a little high, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. <clears throat> Um, on top here, we have the standard charging handle, but I have a little uh, extended latch that I put on there. I think you can find them online for like six bucks. Really cheap. It does a really good job. It sticks out almost an inch, so it fits a little bit more awkwardly in cases and bags, and it pushes up against you when you have it slung on you. Um, so it's good and bad in a little bit of ways. I really like the Radian style charging handles that do a much better job. They don't kind of stick out quite this far. Um, but for like six bucks, it does the job of allowing you to get a lot better grip and leverage on the charging handle. Uh, now let's go ahead and talk about the bolt. Um, I just cleaned this guy and there is a lot of wear and tear on this guy. I do shoot um, a good amount of steel through it. It's probably throughout its lifespan, a few thousand rounds now been 50-50 steel and brass. Um, so there is a lot of wear on the bolt carrier. There's, you know, chunks of material missing from the actual bolt face itself. So I am thinking that it's probably going to actually be completely done after about 5,000 rounds, maybe four or 5,000 rounds, it'll just be completely done and I'll need to put in a new bolt. The bolt carrier group will probably last forever, um, but the bolt itself will probably need to be replaced fairly soon actually. I'm probably about halfway through its lifespan. Now, another thing about the bolt in here is that I have had a couple issues. There is a video of it on my channel. So essentially what I had was I had an ejector pin. It ate through the roll pin that kind of held it in place that allowed it to flex just a little bit forward and backward to eject your uh, spent casings. Um, but essentially it ate through that and so it would no longer eject, sh eject shells or even put new rounds into battery. So kind of an issue there. So I had to diagnose that, figure that out, replace the roll pin. It was only like 10 cents to replace, just annoying that it broke through it. Uh, the next thing that I had to change or upgrade on it is I had to actually take out the extractor on it because the extractor completely sheared off at the end. So it was no longer able to grab the casing and pulling it out of the chamber. So you'd have to either shove something down the end of your barrel or tap it on the ground to be able to get the spent casing out. But what had, happen, ha what had happened was the edge of the, uh, the extractor just completely sheared off. So what I have in there now is I have a much more expensive JP Enterprises Enhanced Extractor. So it's a much more, durable extractor and it has the rubber bushing at the end as well as the spring to allow for consistent grabbing of that round and ripping it out um, so it does a really good job it was like 60 bucks by itself so but jp enterprises makes really good stuff and so adding some of that stuff in there to your system hopefully induces a little bit more uh, durability and reliability and since i've done those changes to it have not had any issues. Last thing to mention on here is that I do have a two point sling attached to a QD slot up front. Um, it is just a cheap kind of one of those eBay special ones. I think you can pick them up for like 10 or 12 bucks. I think technically it's a Tacticon with kind of the bungee ends at one side. So it gives you a little bit of uh, give and stretch, which I personally like. Um, not a big deal either way if you do or don't like that. So this setup overall uh, in its entirety costs about $900. There, there will be a full parts list and price down in the description of what I paid for it. Now you might not be able to find these guys the same pricing and on the sales because I like to buy stuff on sale so I do save a little bit of money doing that. But I'm sure if you look around you'll be able to find stuff very similar to the prices in the description and of course what I would recommend and I will recommend in just a second is going with a different optic setup and a different rear stock to save yourself some weight. Now this guy is supposed to be more of a slow, methodical, more accurate firearm, and so that's how I filmed the intro for it. I wanted to do something that required a little bit more accuracy, something that was more, more in line with precision, so being really precise with not only where you're putting your shots, but how you're taking your shots, that sort of thing. Um, 
This guy here is not a great run and gun setup. It's 10 and a half pounds um, with an empty magazine. With a loaded magazine, you're looking at 11 and a half to 12, depending on your magazine capacity. And that is a lot to swing around for a long period of time. Uh, when I'm out shooting with this guy, if I'm out there for an hour or two with a plate carrier or something like that, it gets very hot, very sweaty, and it is a lot to swing around, especially since even though it is only a 16 inch barrel, it's an AR-10, so it is a little bit longer in the receiver area, so there is a lot of weight out front that you're just gonna have to hold out there for a long period of time. So, this guy is definitely a more fun as a stationary gun or a semi-stationary gun where you're not doing a lot of running or where you're prone or you're braced up against something. As a running gun type thing, it's fun and you can do it for a while, but unless you're, you know, Superman or something like that, it's probably not going to be the most fun thing to do all day. So overall, I do really like this setup and I think that other than the stock and the optic setup, if you want to set up an AR-10 like this, uh, I would really recommend doing it, getting an adjustable gas block up front, a good barrel on there. Now, barrel length is something you can always change. I prefer something a little shorter, a little bit more compact because in where I live, it's very wooded. It's not open fields. It's not, you know, somewhere where you can shoot just thousands and thousands of yards. So I don't need a long barrel to get every bit of velocity out of my round that I can. Um, what I'm more concerned with is having something that's a little bit more compact and portable for my location. Now, if you live somewhere where it's flat and you can shoot as far as you want and you say, well, I want to shoot a thousand yards, well, then you probably want a longer barrel. So that's something that you're going to have to think about with your own setup and your own circumstances. For me, a 16 inch barrel works great, but what you want is something that's very accurate and works for your environment. A 16 inch works for me, where you're from, you might need a 20 or a 24 in some cases or something like that. Um, the two things that I would recommend changing on a setup like this, the rest of it I think is very solid and it's been very, very reliable since I've had some of the kinks finished with, or kinks fixed with the system. The two things that I recommend to change is simplifying your optic setup um, this might look cool and it might seem awesome to have capabilities of a red dot all the way out to 12x magnification, but in reality it's a little bit um, overcomplicated and unneeded, something like a 1 to 8 or even a 1 to 6, or even just a singular optic with backup iron sights with a higher magnification. Um, whatever works best for you um, would probably be a little bit better. Something like this uh, where it's really long, bulky, and heavy is going to make the gun less fun to shoot overall, even though it does give you a good amount of capability having that red dot up close and then all the way out to 12x magnification for longer range type stuff um, you are going to feel the weight and the size of it the next thing of course is this stock is really nice the Trinity Force Alpha has a really good rubberized cheek rest. It does grab at my beard a little bit, but if you're a clean shaven guy, it's not gonna be a big deal. But it does add a lot of weight. And again, just these two things, kind of simplifying your optic setup and reducing the weight of the stock, you can probably get this guy down into the nine pound range, or high nine pound range most likely, but that's gonna be a much better place for an AR-10, especially if you're going to have to do things like moving with it, or running with it, or being out there for long periods of time with it, something that's lighter is going to be much, much more forgiving. So that's pretty much it for the video, but if you guys want to help out the channel in any way, feel free to check out any of the links down in the description below um, and check them out if you're interested. But other than that, that's uh, pretty much it for everything that I need to talk about this guy. This is actually my second time filming the video because a memory card decided to die after 26 minutes of filming it the first time, and now it's 26 minutes into this one, so it's pretty much at the end. So, um, that's pretty much all I had to say about this guy. Again, if you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching, and thank you for watching this far into the video, um, and I will see you guys in the next one. So, peace off. Hey you, yeah you, what are you still doing here? The video's over. Wait, 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 why are you still here? Like, share, and subscribe, or don't. The choice is yours. But if you do subscribe, thanks. And I like pizza. Peace off.